Okay, in this video, I'm gonna show you how I measure for number plates when I'm doing custom number plates for friends. Uh, there's a few steps here. Uh, just an, as an overview, here's how it's gonna go. Basically, going to use some painter's tape, doesn't matter what kind, and put the painter's tape in a cross hatch pattern across the area where we're gonna make the number plate. This will work on any bike. The reason that I'm asking you to do this, if I'm doing your number plates, is because I don't have templates for every bike out there. Um, and sometimes there's compound curves, especially on Suzuki's where there's a curve in the front. We wanna make sure that everything fits right. So I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to create a template that you can email me or message to me. And from that, I can turn around really nice number plates quickly. The number plates are printed on outdoor white thick vinyl basically vehicle grade vinyl. Um, then printed in full color, it has to dry for about an hour. Then a um, hot laminate is put over it and then it's put through a cutter. So everything is perfect. And when these are designed, they're designed uh, one inch by one inch in the uh, one inch equals one inch in Illustrator. So everything is, is exactly perfect on the dimensions. All my little logos and everything have all been done this way but when it comes to number plates we want to make sure that they fit on the edges so that it looks custom and professional and factory so let's get into it i put the first couple of pieces on here and what may not be obvious is that um I'm, over, I'm overlapping these right so i'll do a straight one up and down then side to side then a straight one then side to side and that's so that we can peel this off without it all coming apart okay so I cross-hatched all of the painter's tape on here. I did have a, a number plate on here that's perfect. There's nothing wrong with it, but I thought I'd, since I'm doing this little demo, I'll make a new version of the number plate that has some kind of corners almost coming up here. So um, now it's time to mark where the number plate's actually gonna be printed, right? So one of the first things we wanna do is find these edges where the edge of the bodywork is. You can see where it overlaps just a little bit. We're not gonna put our number plate, obviously right to the edge, cause it's like next to impossible. And we don't have to do this all the way around, just anywhere where you can see the edge. And this is gonna help us figure out exactly where it goes, okay? So I've only got it here on this inner part. And then when we actually des uh, design the number plates, we wanna come off that about a quarter of an inch. And you can freehand this and it doesn't really matter if it's perfect because what's going to happen is I'm going to take it and trace these solid lines of where the number plate edge should be, then mathematically make it perfect and then fold it over so that both sides mirror and the number plate comes out perfect. One of the tough things is these rounded edges aren't sharp like this edge here. So it takes a little bit more uh, finesse, right, to eyeball this and figure out like where do I want the edge of this number plate to come? And I'm pulling it down, pulling it down. Now down here, we've got the intake scoop. And right on the edge of that, I'm gonna just dash that again, like this. And just so I know that that's the physical edge of where this is gonna have to get cut. Sorry for the noise. And then from there, just gonna come down and curve to match that same sort of line. And again, I can make these lines straight in Illustrator. So come up here and then eyeball how I want this, this sort of horn shape to match, All right? Now it doesn't have to be perfect, but that's actually really good. And I could take this, figure out where the center is, design this side and then mirror it. But just to be safe, we're going to go ahead and see that that's just underneath that bolt, right? So we got a bolt over here. So we want to end up about in the same spot, about right there. All right, so same kind of effect here. I'm going to follow this down as, as best I can on this edge. Okay, it's coming straight down and then curve in to come off the intake edge about a quarter of an inch. All right, so got the outer part done. 
Again, here I'm just coming off about a quarter of an inch, going around, and then this is going to tangent up. I'm freehanding this because I can I can make both sides match when I do the digital artwork. So I may take a couple of lines here until I get it sort of looking right, but that's actually good enough. Okay, now the hard part is getting this off of the bike, <coughs> and we don't want to just take it off as it is. What I'm going to do is add a little um, a little bit of duct tape to it because this is an amazing way to keep it all together as one piece and strengthen it. The only sad part about all this is that when, once you make this template and, and take a photo of it, the photo is really all that I need. You don't need to save the actual template once you have a picture of it. And I'll show you why here in a second. I'm going to go ahead and reinforce it. And all I'm really trying to do is keep the painter's tape together on the inside here of where the nose plate's going to go. So that's good enough. Again, just trying to create some reinforcement to keep this all together. This is going to peel off pretty easily. And because we have um, kind of a bulge here in the middle. It is going to come off a little bit weird, but that's that's okay. And just keep peeling this off with it. Try not to let it tear. Okay. Just try to get it as flat as you can. It's sometimes hard to do. All right. Even with that little bulge from where the the center comes out it's going to be fun. All right so next step is take a ruler it doesn't have to be a ruler like this anything it could even be a soft tape and what we're trying to do is find the farthest areas um, farthest area we can on our template to have a reference point. <clears throat> now another way you can do this is you know instead of like marking a reference point just lay the ruler next to it, one of the long areas like this. That's kind of all I need, to be honest. And then lastly, take a picture, point it at me for a second. Take a picture where you're pointing straight down onto it and make sure that you're straight, you're straight over it so that you're not coming in at an angle and that way it stays proportional. So we're gonna take a picture of it just like this with the ruler in the shot. And then when I zoom it into the software, I can use the ruler to make sure that we're getting an exact measurement. All right, I got my kids with their friends over making a lot of noise, so this might get loud, but anyways. Um, so I'm back in the house and I'm on my computer, I'm in, in Illustrator and I'll show you basically how these get created. But be, you know, here's that photo that we took in the garage of the number plate uh, template and of course, you know, as I said, when I was sketching this, that's not going to be perfect, right? So first thing I did is uh, create an outline from that. And you can kind of see that these sides aren't symmetrical. I uh, did some measurements. I could see exactly how um, off it was. And then um, I averaged that, went through, made a few versions, and then basically got to, to one here that's like perfectly symmetrical that's going to work. Uh, we could even, this is to scale, right? So what, in, when I print this, it's going to match the exact live size. And we can go back and compare and sort of see, you know, like how, how is this going to work on the bike? Um, so you can see it's, it's, it's all been, it's a little bit rotated. Uh, I think that's actually the photograph. Let me rotate that and you'll see. So when we get it, when we get it sort of lined up, it's going to be, it's going to be perfect, right? It, symmetrical on both sides. So from, from this, we can then create cut lines and graphics and, and uh, numbers and do whatever we want. Um, I have these for our sixes and our ones and a couple of Suzuki's and some other bikes. Um, probably the most difficult bike is the, is the um, Ninja 400 just because the number plate has to go up onto the windscreen itself and be cut. So it's kind of two pieces. But other than that, I mean, this is a uh, pretty good example, right? So this is going to be the new base template. These other ones here were iterations to get it symmetrical. And kind of now that 
you know, that's all done. We don't need those anymore. We can work from this one. And uh, I could do offsets and all kinds of cool things and duplicate it. Eventually use some uh, numbers that I've already got, and I've got tons of those to, to put them in there. When the, it's a real race bike, typically numbers need to be six inches tall. And if it's a Moto America plate, which I've done a ton of those, they actually have their own um, rules and regulations for how number, how the spacing between numbers, how thick they are, how tall they are, everything. But for most bikes, six inches is sort of what you're shooting for on the height. Um, I'd say, you know, there's a lot of bikes that, that it's impossible to get to six inches in height. So you end up going like five and a half. And even at five and a half, nobody really complains. You can still make it really legible. So anyways, now you see the whole process of how we go from making a template, sketching it, bringing it in, making it perfect. And then from here, uh, we can do whatever we want. So I've got some, you know, plates I've done in the past. Here's some Here's some plates that I did for, for someone many years ago. Um, we didn't end up going with this bubblegum color. I mean, that's his, his color, but that wouldn't be legal, right? So we ended up with a black. And this is, gosh, this was like many years ago. But um, we could do the front plate, the tail, and then a couple belly pans. This size here with all the extra logos, including like uh, these are for the um, windscreen. So if you want your name on the windscreen, let me know because I can usually fit those into the negative space. Uh, any other like racing organization decals or sponsors we can fit in there. And there just has to be enough space to cut it and weed it. But when you're doing number plates, there's usually some extra space. And so you always want to try to get your um, sponsors in there or whatever organization you're on. Other ideas would be to get your name for your helmet. Uh, some organizations require you've got your, your last name and your race number on your helmet in case you fall off and you're separated from your bike and they don't know who you are. You're laying there on the ground. They want to know who you are. Um, another thing to do would be to get uh, wheel rim stickers. So when you go to the tire vendor and you're getting tires, you, um, your wheels have a decal on them. The arrow is the direction, so they mount the tires in the right direction. Believe it or not, that's a challenge. Sometimes you get your tires mounted improperly. So usually uh, racers will have rim decals that have their name, their race number, and the direction of rotation for the rim so that the tires get mounted properly. So anyways, this is a good example of just like how you know this design process works. When this is all done, I send it out to the printer. It usually takes them a day or two, depending on how busy they are. Um, in the off season, it can usually get done quicker. And they end up charging me about $13 a square foot. But remember, we're printing, drying, uh, laminating with clear, then cutting. So it's a pain in the ass for them to do this for me. But I've gone through a few different vendors, and I have one that works really, really well. They know me by name. They know exactly um, how to print my files, and that when they get a file for me, it's going to be perfect. And so, you know, this is why people come back to me for these decals. So if you have any questions, let me know.